Hey gang! Today I thought I would drag out my beads that I got from June and then I would spin some beaded yarn. So I have this lovely mess of pastel type fibers that I thought would go brilliantly color wise. So I have my beads, my floss threaders, and my rowing. So I'm going to walk you through one of the processes I use for doing beaded yarn and uh, maybe in future videos I can do some other processes but for today we're just gonna do this so I'll position the camera and we'll get to it. All right so what I've done is I've taken different colors and I've just torn off little pieces of them and put them into little piles of colors. Now I don't know if I want to match or contrast beads to these, but we'll figure that out as we go. Now, I have my little bead packet here. This is just my computer lap desk. It's handy to work on. Now I have little slots here at the top which are full of dirt from processing fleece. I'm just going to put some of the beads in there, make it a little easier. And I'm going to have a quick slip of coffee. Because we all know I love my coffee. All right. Now I need a floss threader. So it looks like this, so you don't have to see my yucky hands. I do have a skin condition, that's why my palms always look so rough, but no big deal. So I'm going to take a couple of beads and put them, well, it's a good thing I'm not working with a sewing needle today. See, I can't even, big hole. Big thread, still can't thread it. Oh, maybe it's my new glasses. I did, I'm old. I have um, progressive bifocals. So I'm not quite used to these. I only got them yesterday. So I'm gonna blame it on the glasses and not on my lack of coordination. All right, so we have a couple of beads on our floss threader here. Eh, eh, eh. Whoops, my desk is slipping. There we go. So you can see we got the big loop there and the beads are on this part. Then all we're going to do, take a chunk of our fleece. I'm gonna thin it out a bit. You don't wanna twist it too much or you'll felt the fiber and then you won't be able to draft it into your yarn. So once you have that on, through that loop, you just feed a bit of fiber through the loop then you just take the bead and pull it on. So now you have a bit of floof with a bead threaded onto it. So when you're spinning, oh no, there goes my beads to the floor. It's a good thing I'm used to picking up beads. So when you go to spin it on, you can just spin. You can draft it out a little bit, but you don't want to draft it out too much because you want your bead to stay where you put it. But we'll get into that more when we get to the spinning part. Oh, there's my floss threader. Hold on. Let me find it. There it is. Okay. Let me see if I can make this lap desk a little more secure. There, that's better. Now it's not tipping all over the place and I should be less likely to lose beads. So, you take your bead, you put your floss threader, there's the hole, through the hole on the bead, and just let it sit on there. Take your chunk of fiber. Now you don't want it too fat or it's not going to go through the hole on the bead. Might take a little trial and error to figure out the right thickness of the piece. And you just thread 
some of the fibers through the loop on the floss threader. Take your bead. Whoops. Maybe I've had too much coffee today and I've got the shakes and that's why I can't do this. Who knows? So you have it overlapped. Grab your bead. Just pull that through so that threads the fiber through the bead. Now, this is a little too thick. The bead doesn't want to slide down, so just draft your fibers a bit and then snug your bead onto it. So there we go. A little floof with a bead. And we'll add it to the pile. And we'll grab another bead. Put it onto the threader. And grab a little poof of fiber. This is why I tore strips off to start. This is a little fussy and there's other ways to do it, but this is my preferred method. If you thread your beads onto your singles, then you're always wrestling to try to pull beads to where you want them. And I find that is more annoying than doing it this way. But it is one of those things that you have to enjoy it because it's going to take time. Grab another bead, put it on the threader. Oh, if I had coordination, I'm telling you I'd be dangerous. Stick some floof through there and then thread your bead onto the floof. Now you can sit and do this while watching TV or chilling with an audiobook or listening to a podcast. Whatever you'd like. Just sit and thread your beads. It's not hard. Just fussy as a lot of the things I do are. But since I enjoy time with fiber, to me it's not a waste of time. I just enjoy it. It's relaxing, soothing. And pretty soon you'll have a little pile of floofs with beads on them. So I'm going to get all of this fiber here, all these little bits of floof. I'm going to get beads on all of them and then we will do some spinning. So I've spun up a bit of just straight yarn and now I'm going to start adding in my beads. So I want to add one here. So I'll just pull off the roving I'm spinning. I grab a fluff with a bead on it. Draft them together to make sure it's anchored well. And then well that one didn't work so well. I had my bead too tight. So I'll rejoin my roving. Now I want to put another bead. So I will grab my fluff with my bead. Join it on. Draft it. Till I get to my bead. And that one was too loose. So the bead's not going to stay in the right spot. Let's see if third time's the charm. I'm going to make sure that my bead isn't too tight. Draft out a bit of it. There we go. All right. Join the yarn, the fiber. Spin down to the bead. And then continue on. That one turned out darn near perfect. It is going to move around a little bit, though. Darn it all. I forgot to change my flyer head to my regular flyer, so I got to make sure I spin super slow. 
Let me grab another big bead. Showing that on. Draft it out. Pull the big bead. Showing our rolling again. Grab a floof. Now you can be as technical about where you want to add your beads as you want to be. I'm kind of just plopping them wherever, but you can count treadles or however you want to do it. You can also slide your bead around to where you need it to be. I want it right there. Got a little too floofy. Just drafting that out a bit. And I'm going to push my bead up so that it doesn't make a puff. There we go. Now, I'm not worrying about a terribly even yarn because I plan to ply this with the very thin singles. So it's going to be textured regardless. So I am not even focusing on keeping um, an even yarn. But you can take as much or as little time as you want. You know me, embrace the chaos. Now, if it's going to be fiber wrapping over your bead like this, you can see how there's a bit of fiber there. I'm just going to wrap that above the bead so that it doesn't wrap over the bead and cover it up. Now, if you want, you can also just grab your floofs and just keep joining them. And have your beads much closer together. I really should have changed my flyer head. I'm struggling with the speed of this one. Now, if you get too much of a poof, slide your bead up and back to kind of pull those fibers flat so they don't poof out like that one did anyways. And you can just keep spinning. Just keep adding one floof after another. Change colors as you want. That one's really tight. Oh my goodness, that one's tight. All right, let's see if we can slide it up to release those fibers. There we go. Drop down a bit. It's kind of like working with the diz when you're working with beads. If it locks too tight, bag it off a bit till you can move it. Now, to be honest, I haven't done this in years, so I am a bit rusty too. But I do love my beaded yarns to be very textured as well so i wouldn't necessarily be doing this any differently let's slide that up a 
bit. Now I am spinning with BFL, so it does have a super long staple length, which makes it even trickier to draft. Because, you know, I love a good challenge. All right, so you can see how thin it got here. That's way too thin for what I want. I ain't fine. Be like that then. I'm just going to move my bead until the fibers release so I can draft them out a bit. I'm going to move it back. Floof. Thicken up that a little bit. There we go. Yeah, this definitely would have been easier on my regular flyer. I'm a dumbass and didn't change it. So I am adding a ton of twist at a very uncontrolled rate. But whatever. I'm just rolling with it. Now, if you try it a few times, you'll find methods that will work for you. I'm just going to slide my bead up to release that so I can draft out the fibers a bit, slide the bead back where I want it to go, and there we go. All right, so let's just try this. We're gonna spin fairly thick. And when the fibers start to thin, we will add in our next floof until we get a more even thickness in our ply. I should probably increase my uptake a bit too. There we go. So it's starting to thin, so we'll add our next floof to even out the thickness of the ply. Starting to thin, grab our next floof, add it on, even out the thickness of our ply. Get those ends wrapped around there. Starting to thin. Sounds like somebody just hit something. Well, isn't that handy? Starting to thin. Add our floof. Even out the size of our ply. All right, that's all my floofs I've got. So I'm just going to spin a little bit of regular yarn add some extra twist there apply it back on itself so the twist doesn't escape wrap it onto my wheel and I have this very fine singles in the same kind of pastel colorways and I'm going to use that to ply with my bead again so I'll get that set up and we'll be right back and I'm going to check and see if there actually was an accident out there all right no accident someone was really mad and slammed their car door really loud so I have my bobbins on my lazy cage I changed to my regular flyer head because I couldn't stand dealing with the fast flyer anymore Pop that on the ground and we spun our singles Z. So we're going to ply S, but I see I don't have a whole lot of plying twist in my leader. So I'm going to just build that up first. And 
And there's the effect I want. It's like this candle flame sort of poofy thing happening. Now, the reason I wanted to use a fine singles and get like this flame yarn going is if you use two balanced singles, where they go over the bead, as you can see here, the fine ply barely shows as it goes over the bead. But the thicker your ply, the more the bead is going to be blocked. So by doing it this way, not only do I get a cool spiral yarn effect, but more of the bead is left open to shine. And we all know I love chaotic yarns. Oh, there we go. That's a little better. So let's just have a quick check and see how it's looking. It's a little overspun, but not bad with the wash. It should literally all come out in the wash. Because it is so unbalanced using the thicker single and the thinner single, it is going to be a fairly energized yarn on the bobbin. But a lot of that should smooth out with the wash. Now, because this is kind of a soft spiral, I say wash. What I really mean is I will probably steam this yarn. I have a new steam cleaner for my floors that also has a handheld portion and I believe I'm going to try using the handheld part to steam my yarn. Oof, that got thin. Okay, this is where I was really struggling. Once I gave up and just went floof after floof, it went much better. But I'm okay with this. May not be your thing, in which case, don't do it. But if you want to try some, you know, crazy yarns, why not? And for textured yarns, they make lovely hats, if nothing else. Just do your ribbing for around the edging in the ears in a regular yarn, then switch to your crazy yarns and just go nuts. And you can use like tailspun yarn, spiral yarns, all kinds of things on the head portion of the hat. And because the more trapped air there is, the warmer it is, yarns like this actually end up being very warm hats. They're actually quite lovely for hats. And I think we are almost there. Now see, watch how these big poofs will just flatten out into a bleh. Well, let's try going this way then. There we go. And then you can see as it winds on, it spirals into some lovely puffs. All right. Let me grab my... Nitty Naughty, which is here somewhere. There it is. Here's my Nitty Naughty. And let's take it off the wheel and see what we have. I just got this Nitty Naughty not that long ago. It's a two-yard one. So it's a little bit bigger than I'm used to working with. I am getting the hang of it better, but I'm still pretty clumsy with it. All right. So there we go. There's some beaded textured yarn. Actually, I really, really love those beads with those colors. It just gives it this nice little iridescent shine in there. I think it looks very pretty. So I will have to steam that up. And then hang it out to dry. And we'll see how it looks when it's all done. All right, so I have my little steamer right here. I've put my yarn onto a coat hanger so that I'm not handling it directly. 
and we're going to give this a go. Seen myself turn the yarn a bit. I think this would be better to do in the shower. But since I designed my house to have floors that are able to take the abuse, I'm not too worried about it. So you can see as I'm steaming it, it's actually straightening out. I probably should have used a lighter kit too. Probably would have made it easier. But seeing as how it's the first time I've tried this with the steamer. But you can see now that the twist is all the way down to here. It's kind of relaxing and setting into it. Alright. One more turn. And you can see how much looser it's hanging now. So I will just finish steaming that and uh, hang it up to dry. Give it a little tug. There we go. Now it's hanging in a nice open loop. So when that's dry, we will try working up a little swatch with it so we can see how it looks in the end. So I knit up a sample with the beaded yarn. I ended up using size nine needles. Um, but what I ended up with was like three different yarns in one skein. So here would be just the straight singles, then plied with the thin singles. Now here you can see where I started to add some beads. So this portion here, I ended up switching from stockinette to garter. That's the word. <laughs> so this portion here was where I would spin some roving and then add a floof and bead. And you can see that the beads all tend to like end up in the same spot over here. So this last bit is where I just spun floof after floof after floof after floof, and I love that. That ended up being my absolute favorite. You can see, this is why I changed to garter stitch, is the beads tend to come, tend to pop out with the garter stitch, and you can get that pop of color. Now imagine this in a winter hat. Like it'd be floofy and warm and it's pretty with all those little sparkling beads in there. If you were out skiing or tobogganing and the sunlight could catch them, it would just be so pretty. So that was the first method for sp spinning beaded yarn. Um, I'll probably do another video later on some other methods of spinning beaded yarn and we'll continue to explore until we use up these beads. Um, that might happen really fast because Bobo came by and knocked the entire package on the floor because he is mostly kitten, not cat. I mean, he's over a year old, but his attitude is 100% kitten. Talk about embrace the chaos. That's Bobo in a nutshell. So I'm going to have to try to retrieve as many of the beads as I can. Of course, if, uh, I don't have enough of those. I have tons of beads. We will find a way to spin some more beaded yarn. I also want to uh, do some feathered yarn at some point. So I will probably practice that off camera because that's a really tricky one. And it could take hours for me to get back in the groove again. And I don't want to bore you with it. Although if that's what you want to see is me struggling to remember how to spin feathered yarn. Let me know. 
I'll do it on camera. <laughs> you know me, I have no concern about failing epically on film. It just doesn't bother me. There's bigger concerns in life than mucking up trying to make yarn. But that's it for today, guys. So thanks for joining me. If you like this, do the stuff down below because I do stuff like this all the time. And always remember coffee or tea if you prefer tea. But some sort of caffeinated hot beverage is necessary for living. So thanks, guys. See you next time.